Well, good morning, Downsview. Pastor Pete speaking to you on a Wednesday morning. Beautiful day out today. So odd. After just a couple of days ago, there was these crazy snow flurries on, well, I guess it was Sunday evening, and then Monday morning we all woke up to snow, and now I'm looking out at the golf course, and there are people golfing out there again. And, you know, as, as difficult sometimes as, as weather is, you always know it's going to change. I mean, some of you have friends out in the in the maritime provinces, and they say, you know, if you if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes, and it'll be something different. Because, you know, weather changes so quickly. I kid with you all the time that as a, a northern boy, I keep waiting for winter. Uh, I haven't seen it for three plus years in Toronto here because this just isn't winter. When I think about what winter is, I was chatting with some of the guys up at NBC this weekend. And they were saying how, you know, uh, you know, winter's on its way. It was a pile of snow out there for a day and it's gone as well. But they were saying how, you know, you, Pete, you must be from, uh, being from Northern Ontario, you must find these winters are, uh, you know, the, the kind of thing that's just so different for you. And I said, well, it is. And they said, yeah, we read about, you know, what's going on up north. I mean, you guys got the worst winters up there. And I said, we don't have the worst winters. We have the best winters. <laughs> you want to see winter? Let me bring you to Sault Ste. Marie. Let me bring you back to my hometown in Thunder Bay. Uh, this is Toronto. This is not real winter. Uh, we can these. These are the worst winters. This is, this is barely winter here. Um, but the reality is, as these kind of things start to change and the seasons start to ebb and and flow, it it just reminds us that things just don't stay the same that the world is constantly changing and God has built in a rhythm of seasons and changes that we all are going to deal with as, as human beings here in this world. And part of that reminds me of God's <clears throat> determination to always be changing things, but to not change himself. Malachi chapter three says, I am the Lord and I change not. But because God doesn't change in his character, it doesn't mean God doesn't change the way he does things. He's bringing change in this world all the time, but he's also changing the way that he chooses to deal with us and the things he chooses to bring into our, our lives. I have told you I've been gripped by this book called Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy by Mark Vrogup at College Park Church in Indiana. And in the, the little portion of the book of, of Lamentations that I was looking at just the last day or so, in chapter 3 of Lamentations and verse 31, in fact, let me go back to verse 28 because you see the, the flow of the argument. Jeremiah is writing that in verse 28, Let him sit alone and be silent, for God has disciplined him. Let him put his mouth into the dust. Perhaps there is still hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him. Let him be filled with disgrace. He's saying, look, times are going to come, and it's going to be awful. And it's going to feel awful, and it's going to seem awful. And it's going to seem and feel awful because it is. There's going to be times that are particularly difficult. But notice what he says there, that he says, For the Lord has disciplined him. God is not punishing his children in a punitive way because they owe a debt that's not paid. No, no, Christ has paid that debt. And what we owe to God has been paid to him by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so discipline is a similar word to the word disciple, to be under the teaching of, <clears throat> to be under the tutelage of, of another. And God is disciplining, training, shaping, molding us. And, and sometimes it comes in... Wow, severely difficult situations. But here's his promise about change. He says in verse 31, for, so feel these things, verse 28 to 30, because, or for, the Lord will not reject us forever. Even if he causes suffering, he will show compassion according to the abundance of his faithful love. For he does not enjoy bringing affliction or suffering on mankind. And you think, well, God, if you don't enjoy it, then why are you doing it? Why, why would you bring these things to pass? Why would you cause situations to be that way if you're not enjoying them? The Hebrew 
sense there <coughs> is an interesting word that speaks about from the heart. It's actually, the word heart there is a collection of three different Hebrew words, melevo, which literally means from the heart. And the thinking, the, the emphasis there is he's trying to say, God doesn't afflict willingly from his heart as if this is his heart's joy and his central desire of his being to bring difficulty and suffering into the lives of his people. That's not what he's saying. On the other hand, God is pleased to do it because he sees the big picture that I just don't see. Don't you feel like that every once in a while? That there's folks in your company or in your school, there's maybe elders in your family, maybe there's folks you can see in your neighborhood what they're doing, and they just can see the big picture and the long view. And after a little while, a difficult situation or a situation that looks odd or weird, it, it's just so much better for having gone through that. I just came down to 400 this morning from uh, Muskoka area. And, you know, that highway has been under construction as long as I've ever driven to Southern Ontario, not just the last three plus years that we've been here, but, you know, we've been coming down this way for 15 or 20 years. And it feels like it's always under construction. Well, there's portions of that now that it hit me this morning. I'm looking around going, wow, they're almost done. And I thought they're almost done because I thought to myself, wow, I am, I am not losing any time here at all. I keep waiting for the traffic jam of, you know, the, 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 the 400 parking lot uh, <laughs> that it often is. But we were flying down there and I thought, wow, these roads are in beautiful shape. The exits are working, the on-ramps are working, and people are, are just, just cruising along there. The traffic flow is beautiful. And I thought, you see, there was an awfully difficult time for many years. And all of us are thinking, oh, there's always construction. I hate construction. I hate hitting construction. Don't you? I, mean, I hate hitting construction on the highway. But when you see the other side of it, you're like, wow. <laughs> this is a lot better than it was. And you had to go through that inconvenient time. Now that's a whole lot different, I realize, than some of the heart-wrenching, just gut-wrenching difficulties that some of you are, are experiencing and, and, and are feeling in your life. But don't forget the promise of God there. Waiting is not a waste. It's Mark Vogop's word or phrase, waiting is not a waste. And it's not a waste because it says, God will not afflict forever. He, if he causes suffering, he will, he will, he will, preacher, he will show compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. It's his love that's steadfast, not his discipline. It's his ongoing care and loving kindness that he chooses to bring. Remember, he's not obligated to bring it. Not that God has to act like this, but by his grace, he chooses to bring that into our lives. So, you know, there's a portion of this lesson is just merely saying, you know, it's almost trite to say, hang in there. Don't ever give in to the idea that as bad as it's been is as good as it's going to get. That's just not what the Bible is saying. He will not cast off forever. As we're waiting for God to come and deliver us from the difficulties, we have reason to expect that he will. Sometimes that deliverance is the other side of our last breath. We're not promised a relief from COVID. We're not promised a relief from the, the challenges financially, relationally, in your marriages and in your parenting. I listen to stories of my brothers these past couple of days and I try to talk to my brother pastors an awful lot and I just think, boy, oh boy, there's things that they're going through that someone's telling them it's going to be okay. Someone's telling them it's going to, you're going to get by it. Well, one day we will but not even necessarily in this world. But the promise of God is that he will not discipline, he will not cast off, he will not bring difficulty forever. There is every reason that waiting is worth it because it's his steadfast love that lasts and, and that reigns. So Downsview, tonight, seven o'clock, we will look at the last of our series in the discipleship of the next generation. It's worth waiting. <laughs> 
as we impart the Word of God into the next generation, doing all that we can to do it, investing in the lives of our parents and caregivers so that they can invest in the lives of the next generation. We'll look at Psalm 78, and we've looked at Psalm 78, but we'll look at a specific exposition through Psalm 78 just to see that we <clears throat> that we got it, and we got it clearly as... and. It's never absolutely complete, but in a com much more complete way than we've just kind of touched on it for these number of weeks. So go to our YouTube channel tonight. We're normally on Facebook Live. We're trying something a little different there. And again, I want your feedback. Uh, sometimes you don't get feedback until you make a change and people feel like, ah, oh, I don't like this. And then they say something. So do that. Tell me. Let, let, let us know. Um, or if we should even go another direction and have a Zoom meeting perhaps on Wednesday nights where we can actually interact with each other and see each other and, and, and speak to each other that way. Uh, or if you think back to the Facebook Live, which is a little more personal than the video you'll see tonight, but it looks exactly the same. I've recorded it in the same spot in our church lobby. But just go to our YouTube channel. If you're not sure, just before 7 o'clock, I'll put another Facebook Live up and the link will be on there. Or just look back on my Facebook page from this morning and you will see the Facebook Live. It's a little invitation there. And on there is the link to our YouTube channel. Again, it's the same place you've been watching videos for the last eight months. <laughs> so just go to YouTube, just type in Downsview Baptist Church and you'll find them there. Or go to the church's website, downsviewbaptistchurch.com, go to the media section and you'll see all of the videos that, that are there. It's not going to be live until seven o'clock tonight. So if you go at quarter two and think, ah, oh, it's not working. No, it's not supposed to work. It'll work and, and come on live at, at seven o'clock tonight. So I will see you then, or you will see me at least then. And by God's grace, we'll be encouraged in the Lord. Thanks for listening again today, friends. Cheers.